Hello and welcome to this new Tao presentation screencast. Today we are going to demonstrate how to create a dynamic clock that you can put in your own documents. So for instance, I name a new document clock starting with a blank template. And so of course I get a blank page here. And we are going to use the programming language built in Tao presentations to build this clock. So in order to do that, I show this document source window here. Now, if I draw a rectangle like this, um, let me take a rectangle here, you see that I get a shape, and that's basically the description of my rectangle. Now, I want to take this in a simplified form like this, and let me just pick my coordinates by hand there. So center of the screen, uh, let's make it, for instance, 10 pixels wide and 200 pixels high. And that's what I get. Now, if I do a rotation along the Z axis, which is the axis crossing the screen, you have X is horizontal, Y is vertical, and Z crosses the screen. So I rotate along this axis, and by 360 degrees divided by 60 seconds, and I multiply by the number of seconds. And so now this is turning. Now it's not turning in the right direction, uh, so let's ch change this, minus 6, like this. And uh, now I got the basis for my seconds hand. Let's remove that rotation for now and just shift that up by 100. So now basically um, the center of the screen is uh, shifted up by, uh, it's where, where we have the bottom of this rectangle here. So now if I do a rotation again, I get basically this uh, effect. So let's move it slightly down like this, for instance. And uh, do that again, or maybe even a little bit further. And let's do that again for the, the minutes hand, like this. So again, that's 360 degrees divided by the number of minutes in one hour, which is uh, 60. So, okay. Now there is an unexpected effect there, which is that because I'm rotating a first time here and a second time here, uh, my minutes hand is also rotating with second. I don't want that. So there is a way to prevent this, which is to use locally. And what locally does is ensure that the changes you make inside it stay there. And so now I got the effect I wanted, except that my uh, minutes hand should be maybe slightly bigger um, and uh, maybe a little bit thinner, for instance or wider. Okay, so now let's um, do this again with ours. But now it's 360 divided by 12, since we have 12 hours in a full circle. So that's 30 degrees per hour. And um, that's about right. I just want this one to be smaller, 150 for instance. And so something like uh, 60 might do it. So 50 like this, and this one 100. Okay, why don't we change the color of this rectangle here in order to have the second hand with a different color? Sorry, red. Um, maybe I want this to be in front. So this is actually drawn in the order that we put there. So now I can have this in front and maybe add a little bit of decoration like something like this. Or slightly smaller. And maybe another one near the top. So that's uh, 200, that's 180. Okay, so this is the basic design for the inside of the clock. Now what I need is some sort of background around it. So let me draw a rectangle, uh, sorry, a circle there. So circle zero, zero, and uh, for instance, uh, 300. 
Well, okay, that's a black circle, and that's not what I want. What I want is the line color to be dark gray, and the inside to be slightly off-white. So I'm going to use RGB colors here, uh, something like FEA. Okay. Um, maybe we want something slightly more sophisticated here. We can, for instance, create a radial gradient. Um, and we're going to start with um, so let's make it the size of the clock, so 300 times 300 pixels. And the radius of the gradient is going to be 200 pixels. And we're going to put it slightly to the right, 180, and uh, near the top, something like 50. Um, these coordinates here are pixel coordinates, so they start actually at 0, 0 is the top left co corner, and Y is going down, so it's opposite uh, the drawing coordinates. Now, if I put a gradient color here, so let me start with uh, very visible colors just to illustrate what I'm doing. So at the beginning of the gradient, I'm going to put R at 100%, red, no green, no blue, and uh, completely opaque. So that's the alpha value 100%. And at the other end of the spectrum, so 100 here, I'm going to make it zero here and make it completely blue. And uh, make it slightly transparent. So something like uh, 60 here. Okay, so what is missing is that I did not specify what color to draw this with. And since now the colors are inside the gradient, I need to draw this with white. Uh, I can color it in yellow, for instance, and so I would color the whole gradient. So now I'm coloring this white, and I see where my gradient is positioned. I want this to be slightly further to the right, uh, maybe less, something like this. And I can replace that with the actual colors I want, light, like 90%. And uh, this one would be 100%, 25%, like this, for instance. Mm, I think I wanted the opposite. Like this. OK, so this is my background, and of course, you can tweak it uh, the way you want. And uh, another thing we need to for this clock to, to look nice is to have some kind of uh, um, tick mark. So let's start with a simple tick mark at the top. Uh, so that would be 0, 280 vertically. And uh, since we made uh, the rows 15 wide, the, the hands are 15 pixels wide. So I'm going to keep that and make it 40 pixels high. OK, so it's slightly too high, 270 here. So that's my first tick mark. Now I need to repeat this. So let me call that tick mark of n. And uh, I'm going to do this like this. Um, I'm rotating this um, by 6 degrees minus 6 for every n. And so now I can draw multiple tick marks, for instance, with a for loop for n in 0 0.59 loop tick mark n. OK, now I'm actually programming in a sort of uh, uh, imperative language way. I can also use a shortcut with a map by mapping this with 0 to 59, which is shorter to write. Same effect. Now, my tick marks don't look good because what I really want is to have a different tick mark every fifth. So something like if n mod 5 is 0, so this is the one that we have. And then the others could be something like this. Uh, circle. 
and let's make it uh, 12. Okay, that's positively ugly. Okay, this is better. So now I've got the basis of my clock. Now you can notice something which is that this uh, hours hand here is not moving forward because we were just using the exact number of hours. So if I want to adjust that, I need to add half a degree for every minute that passed. That's a better effect. And of course, I can do the same thing for the seconds. And now you can see that there is a slight movement. Um, okay, okay, so it's not half a degree there. It's uh, so it's a sixty degree, sixty seconds for six degrees. So now I've got the effect I want. Now there is a last tweak I can decide to do or not, depending on the look I want, which is I can use here uh, time, which is the number of seconds, but now in a continuous way. And so now I've got this more continuous motion, which maybe more suited to your taste or not, it really depends on what you want. Let's shift back to this uh, discontinuous movement. Okay, so now I can call all this thing a clock. And so now, having done that, I have this new word to my vocabulary that, I, that is clock. And I can put that, for instance, in some kind of presentation. So let me use the seasons greetings theme. Theme seasons greetings. I'm going to create a picture slide with that clock. And now I get this uh, nice clock. Okay, so did I forget something about the color? Here we have um, many of these rectangles show white instead of black. So I need to fix that by doing something like this, which is here. The default color is black. And I get the look I, I had originally. So you can see the transparency that I put in my gradient is playing here. And of course I can do more complicated slides like a base slide um, where the left column we created this clock in 10 minutes and a right picture with my clock. And I need to put the title, space slide. Let me specify the title explicitly. Text. This is my clock. And now we got what I wanted. So I hope that this was interesting to you and that you will uh, create your own beautiful clock design and share, share them with us.